My name is Marcel Poziot. I work as a managing partner and developer at my own company, which is called Beyond Code, which I started one and a half years ago. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter using this Twitter handle. I will tweet mostly about PHP, Laravel related topics. Um, so yeah, I'm a managing partner, which means I'm not developing too much anymore, but I still love to do open source. Um, so just some quick numbers. Um, I have more than, with the company and my personal account, it's more than 60 open source packages that I've developer de de developed, which have been downloaded, I think, at a rate of 800,000 times per month now, which is mind blowing. So uh, chances are that if you're in the Laravel ecosystem, maybe you've used one of my packages. So if you do, come say hi, I'm a nice guy. All right, so let's talk about how we can achieve um, real-time communications and real-time solutions within our applications. So quickly get rid of full screen here. Let's begin it. All right, so the first option that we have uh, which is, I guess, the most common one for us as web developers is by using AJAX requests. So here, um, this I think when you search for real-time application use cases, this is the one that always comes up, it's chats. Uh, bear with me, we'll take a look at some more interesting examples later on, but it's the best to just showcase what, what we're going to do. So in this example, we have a very basic chat application that uses WebSocket, uh, AJAX, sorry. And I can simulate a message like this, and then it shows up in the chat. Sometimes it shows up twice, but yeah. So this uh, is the chat, and if we take a look behind the scenes, this is what's going on. So we have AJAX requests, which means the client, in this case the web browser, does have to ask the server constantly if there are new messages. So uh, it's impossible for the client to know if there are new chat messages. So now we're sending a HTTP request to our server every second. Um, maybe you can already see why this might not be the best idea. So um, first of all, doing this every second means we have to send a lot of data over to our server. Um, we have, even though the payload is not really big, we have to send headers, we have to get the response, parse the response. We have to make some DNS lookups, even though it gets cached, but it's still a lot of overhead for a simple chat application. And the problem when we speak about real time is, so if you look at this, it's not real time. Uh, so because we're sending from the client asking the server, hey, are there new messages? Every second you have a delay of up to one second. So we could decrease this uh, and send more requests more frequently, but then we run into other problems. So quickly clear this here. Okay. The next approach would be long calling. So let me show you the chat example again. We can send messages. They show up. And if we take a look behind the scenes, we now still have XHR requests that we send from the client to the server, but we kind of move the problem from our client to the server. So now instead of the client asking the server constantly, hey, what's up, do you have new messages? We send one request to the server, and then our server is asking the database every second if there are new messages in the database. And eventually this request is going to time out. Yeah. Um, and then the client is going to ask again. So the request is being kept open for 30 seconds max. And whenever we receive a message, the request stops and a new one is opened again. So yeah, we have less HTTP requests in the end, but we are just moving the problem from asking from the client to the server to the server asking the server itself. So, and uh, this also doesn't scale very well. So if you imagine a chat application that has this kind of setup and you have 1,000 people in a chat room, you would have 1,000 open HTTP connections for a very long time. But still, long calling might be an option if you want to achieve real-time applications. Okay. 
Now we're going to the good stuff. WebSocket. So same chat application that we have, and I can send a message. And it's a bit faster. There's no second delay. And once again, if we take a look behind the scenes, so for some reason, the WebSocket connects twice. So we still have these XHR requests, but they come from the way I implemented the chat. So it's using Laravel. Uh, so Laravel is using doing this authentication request, is which basically just asks the server if I can join this chat room. And I have a message endpoint which would load existing messages. But the interesting part is in this. So here we have the WebSocket connection. And what you can see yeah, is that we have these messages coming in over a consistent connection. So whenever I send a message, we have this WebSocket connection and new messages appear, and then they get displayed on the user interface. So, all right. Um, so WebSockets itself are defined in this fancy looking RFC 6455, and it means that WebSockets are its own full-blown protocol. So WebSockets are not like piggybacking on HTTP, it's its own protocol, and the main advantage and why WebSockets are so fast is because they make use of full duplex. So you can think of full duplex, if you don't know, um, if you have a telephone, that's like a full duplex connection because I can call you, you can reply, and we can both speak at the same time and we can both hear each other at the same time. Uh, but on the other hand, if you have like a walkie-talkie, that doesn't work. So walkie-talkie would be half duplex. Uh, I can speak, the other one can listen, and then the other way around. And if you compare that with HTTP requests, HTTP requests are half duplex, and they can only communicate in one direction at a time. And so that's why WebSockets are so fast. This is what uh, a typical WebSocket flow looks like. So we have a client. It doesn't need to be a browser. It could also be a iOS app, an Android app, some network, a desktop application. And this client connects to a WebSocket server. Then um, both parties perform a kind of handshake. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And once that handshake is done and the server accepted the client, we have one persistent connection that is being kept open all the time the client is connected to the server, and we can send messages in both directions over this persistent connection. And then, at some time, maybe the browser window is closed, the connection gets closed to the WebSocket server, or the WebSocket server kicks out a user from the chat, and then the connection is, just, uh, is no longer available and gets disconnected. So the handshake is still a plain old GET request, which is kind of strange because we have our own protocol. But to establish a WebSocket connection, the client performs a GET request to the WS endpoint, which is for WebSocket, for the WebSocket protocol. Uh, if you have a secure WebSocket endpoint with SSL, which you should have, uh, it would be WSS. And what the HTTP request does, it's basically just asking the server, hey, I want to upgrade this HTTP connection to a faster WebSocket connection. Can we do this? Um, and there are these SEC WebSocket uh, headers. Don't get confused by them. It's not about security at all, um, even though it might sound like it. It's just to prevent a cache proxy to establish the same connection again. It's, it has nothing to do with authentication or, or security at all. And then we get a response from the server, which is basically, if the connection gets accepted, just telling the client, all right, you're good to go, upgrade your HTTP connection and make use of the WebSocket protocol. And from that point on, we have this connection established. And the cool thing about WebSockets is that you can't only send textual information, but you can also send binary information over a WebSocket. The browser support for WebSockets is, in my opinion, extremely good. If you are this one Oprah Mini user, please say hello to me. Uh, I've never met anyone who's using Oprah Mini, so I'm really curious to see who that person is. Uh, so I think it's safe to say that browser support is good. 
Okay, so uh, web sockets are fast and they're great for real-time use cases, but what are those use cases anyway? So the first one uh, that I came up, so as I said, I'm like a Laravel guy. Mm. Uh, and I like to use Laravel Forge. So it's really quick, it's, it's about, uh, it's a service that lets you provision servers and then you can deploy sites using it. So what I did before I recorded this video is I have created a site on Laravel Forge and connected it to my GitHub repository. So every time I push a commit, to GitHub, then Laravel Forge is going to pick that up and is going to deploy my website. So let's take a look what happens. So at the bottom, I'm just pushing a commit to my repository. And then on the network tab, you can see that the server from Forge recognized this push and it's now uh, on the right side, there's this deploy now button which is rotating. So it just detected that I pushed something and it then performed some action. So similar to the chat, WebSockets are extremely good if you want to send information from the server to the client when the client has no idea when something is going to happen. So the client doesn't know that I'm triggering a deployment, but the server knows it, so it sends it to the client. Another use case, uh, so this is uh, more of a fun one, if you tweet something with a PHP SRB hashtag, it'll show up here. So go ahead and tweet fun things if you want. Um, so this is really just more of a fun way of how you can do it. Um, and the way this works, I'll just show you really quick, is so I just have set up a simple Laravel application, which is using a Twitter streaming API class. And all I'm doing is I'm basically just listening for specific keywords or mentions. And whenever I hear one of those things, I'm emitting an event. And this event is then being broadcasted to my WebSocket server. And my client is then basically listening for this event. And when it shows up, it will get displayed here on this page. All right, another use case would be this here. If you're fast, you can go to paint.dev.beyondco.de and paint along with me. Uh, but I'm also going to do this. So WebSockets are great for games as well. So I can just go and paint something here, and then it will be sent over WebSockets to all the other connected clients. So I can do it here as well. And this happens for all clients that are connected. So because there is no additional payload that is being sent, WebSockets are great for games where you have to send small chunks of information fast over the wire. Okay, so WebSockets are kind of cool. Let's create our own WebSocket server. Um, so WebSockets, I personally wouldn't really think of WebSockets that we should use PHP because WebSockets are this kind of asynchronous full duplex thing and why should we use PHP for this? So let's go for Node.js. This is like the most simple way of how you can implement a WebSocket server written in Node.js. So um, we're just creating a new WebSocket server. Since we need to use HTTP for the handshake, it also needs an HTTP server. We give it a port, and then we basically have an, aven an event whenever a request comes in, we are going to either accept or reject this request. When we accept it, we have a connection, and on this connection, we have additional events where we can see whenever a message gets sent from the client or when the message gets closed. So that's like the simplest thing how we can do it in Node. And the client looks something like this. So this would be plain JavaScript to connect with your browser to the WebSocket server that we have in Node. So again, we point it to the WS endpoint, and then we kind of have the same events on the client side as well. So we can react when a connection is opened, when we have errors, and when we have messages received from the server. All right, so, but what about PHP? I mean, this is a PHP conference, so uh, let's see what you can do with PHP as well. There's a very, very cool package 
which is called Redshift. And Redshift basically allows you to create WebSocket and HTTP servers in PHP. So no external dependencies for Node or anything at all. It's built on top of React PHP, um, which is basically like an asynchronous, it allows you to create asynchronous event-driven <coughs> PHP applications. And this is what, again, the most basic WebSocket server would look like written in PHP. So all we need to do is we have a class, and this class would need to implement this message component interface that comes from Ratchet. And then we have these events similar to the WebSocket approach, where we can listen to whenever a connection is opened, whenever we receive a message, when it's closed, or on an error. And the last lines is how you would start this. So you would just put this in a PHP file, run it from your terminal, and then you have a WebSocket server. And the client, it still remains the same. It doesn't matter if the server is running on PHP or on Go or Node.js or anything. And it might not feel like it's that exciting, but to me, it really was when I first heard about Ratchet. Because, um, so I'm, I like developing PHP packages. And what this allows me to do is I can create a package, in this example for, for Laravel or for Symfony or whatever you want to do, and ship your package with a built-in WebSocket server, which is kind of crazy in my opinion. So that's uh, another use case I want to show you. I built a thing called the Laravel Dusk dashboard. Um, how many of you, just a quick show of hands, know about Laravel Dusk? Okay, maybe a quarter of the people. Okay. So Laravel Dusk is like a browser testing tool on top of Laravel, which uses um, Chromium, so like <coughs> headless Chrome to run the tests. And the Dusk dashboard is heavily inspired by something called Cypress.io. And Cypress.io allows you to run tests in your browser, and you can see the browser tests as they come in in real time. So let me quickly show you how this works with the Dusk dashboard and what WebSocket has to do with it. <coughs> So I just started the Dust dashboard from my terminal, and what it did is it's starting a HTTP server, which is written in Ratchet, and I can now start tests in here. And as you can see, the tests are coming in in real time. In the background, we're running PHP unit, and then you can see for each of the individual steps, I can, uh, for example, here, take a look at the individual steps that the browser performs once the test runs. And I'm using WebSockets for this to send the PHP unit execution of each individual browser step over WebSockets to this WebSocket server, which uses HTTP on the other end. And uh, so th this requires a more complex setup. So you have not only the WebSocket server, but also an HTTP server. Um, and what it looks like is we have an application where we combined additional routes. And in this case, we have the WebSocket route, which is just the WebSocket server that accepts conne WebSocket connection. And then I have an event route, which is uh, accepting the requests from PHP unit. So every PHP unit assertion is being sent as a post request to this events endpoint. And then we're just adding the route. And in this event endpoint, all I'm doing is I'm accepting the payload from PHP unit, whatever it is, and then I'm broadcasting it to all the connected WebSocket clients. So with this setup, this allows me to send the PHP unit results to the browser immediately. Um, so we have the plain JavaScript approach on how we can connect to WebSockets, but there's also a thing called Laravel Echo. Um, you can use Laravel Echo without using Laravel as a PHP framework. Um, and Laravel Echo is a JavaScript, um, pretty much like a client, where you can connect to WebSocket services. So in this case, I would join a channel, and you can think of channels as chat rooms or rooms. And inside of these rooms, I can listen for events. So in this case, I'm joining a 
orders channel and listen for the order shipped event. And whenever that happens, so when I when the WebSocket connection receives it, I can react to it in some way. So if you want to use Laravel Echo or WebSockets in general, the best way to get started, I would say, is Pusher. Um, Pusher is a commercial SaaS application that allows you to quickly create WebSocket service and get started with them. They offer a free tier, um, which has a limit on how many connections you can have simultaneously. And it's really easy to get started. You get some nice things like these, uh, these graphs where you can see how many connections you had, how many messages you sent. You have a debug dashboard where you can see the WebSocket events coming in in real time and can you can react to them. And the integration when using Laravel Echo is very easy. So you just create the new Echo instance, say that you want to use Pusher as your broadcaster, and then you give it your Pusher key and that's basically all you need to configure and then you can listen to events that come to your Pusher uh, WebSocket server. But um, what I experienced when working with clients, I don't know, maybe this is just a Germany thing, but in Germany, most companies don't feel comfortable with having something like Pusher and sending their data over to a big American company. So um, especially when we have like internal projects that don't need internet connection, we want to have a WebSocket server that runs standalone. So then there is something called the Laravel Echo server, which runs on Node.js and it requires Redis. So it basically uses Redis to broadcast and collect the event. And you can install it using NPM. Then you can initialize the Echo server, which will give you a configuration file. You can add additional clients to this server. So um, the Echo server is multi-tenant support out of the box. So you can have one server, but multiple additional clients or applications that use it. And you can just start the server and use it in your application. The way that you would lose use Laravel Echo with this is pretty similar. You would just say that you want, as the broadcaster, to use Socket.io, and then you point it to the host of your WebSocket server. Okay. Uh, seems like it's not even working anymore. Okay, um, so the other approach is that you use a package that I built in December, which is called Laravel WebSockets. It's the name is a bit misleading. Uh, it's basically a WebSocket server written in pure PHP. It's built on top of Ratchet, and it's a drop-in replacement for Pusher. So if you are using Pusher in your project and you want to get rid of it for whatever reason, you can just use this package. Um, it comes with some migrations for Laravel if you want to do this that gives you some statistic information, and then you can start the WebSocket server. The configuration for this looks like this. So when you publish the configuration, it also has multi-tenancy support out of the box. So you can configure multiple apps that you want to have available in your WebSocket server. And um, as I said, you can use it as a pusher replacement out of the box. So that's why there are these pusher environment keys in here. Um, sometimes that confuses people because if they want to get started with a package and don't have pusher, um, they don't really know what to put in there. So just make some credentials up, put them in there, and then you're good to go. Um, you can also change the way that the applications get loaded. So by default, we're using the config app provider, which means the, com the applications are loaded from this config file, but you could also implement your own app provider and read them from the database, for example. Um, what more? I'm not going to every point, don't worry. Okay, uh, one thing that's most important is the max request size in kilobytes. So if you're using Pusher, they have very strict limits. So they only allow around 10 kilobytes that you can send in one WebSocket payload. So for example, the, the Dust dashboard, it's sending the complete HTML 
from the browser over WebSocket connection. So this wouldn't be possible with Pusher. It's not configurable at all. So uh, that's why you can also configure like the maximum request size in our package. All right. And the integration, if you want to do this and use the package and do this with the, the echo, uh, it's a bit more work, but um, since we're just using Pusher, uh, we basically just re-implemented the Pusher server uh, SDK. So you can use all the clients that are available from Pusher. So you just say the broadcaster is going to be Pusher. But then Pusher has been so nice to allow us to um, modify the host and the port. So then you can just point it to your custom WebSocket server and your custom WebSocket host. Um, and one more important thing is the disable stats, because by default, Pusher is sending some statistical information. It's phoning home, basically. So you want to disable that. And the cool thing uh, by using Pusher is you're not limited to Laravel Echo. You could also use like the, the Pusher JavaScript client. If you have an iOS or an Android app that you want to use with WebSockets, you can just use the Pusher SDKs and point them to our um, our server, or the one that you host in this case. So I should quickly show you how this will look like. When you install the package, you have this kind of dashboard. So it's pretty similar to what you have with Pusher, where you can have all the tenants or the applications that you have in your configuration file. You can see them here. And then you can connect to your WebSocket application. And the cool thing is that you can see the events in real time. So let me put this side by side. So if I open a chat, you can see here that we had this subscribed event. So I sub subscribed and joined this chat channel. And then if I go and type something here, you can see that we have the typing events coming up in real time. If I send this, we have the API messages. And you can also extend this, take a look at the message payload. So we can copy that, put it in the event creator. And then I could do something like, hello, PHP Serbia. And put it in the present chat channel. And the event is called at events sent and there it goes so you can use this to debug your WebSocket connections you can see the the data coming in in real time um, by default this is only enabled locally during development because it's a possible security issue if they have this in production but you can uh, secure this with additional middlewares in your Laravel application if you want okay there are some pitfalls when using uh, this package, which is basically because of how PHP uh, with React PHP works. The main issue is that on a Linux file system, everything, or on a Linux system, everything is a file. So when you have a connection opened to the WebSocket server, it uses one file descriptor in your Linux system. And this is by default limited to 1024 descriptors per, uh, per process. So this means that by default, if you run this server, you can only have 1024 maximum users connected to your WebSocket server, which might not be as good. So you can bypass this limit using the ulimit-n command, but this is only a temporary solution. So you would have to do this and afterwards start the server. To do this uh, permanently, you would have to put this, uh, it depends on your, um, on your Unix system that you're using, but you would have to put this configuration somewhere in your Linux system. And another uh, thing you need to be aware of when using the package as the WebSocket server is that using the underlying event loop for React PHP, we also have a limit of 1,024 users. That's simply how the event loop in React PHP works. So to bypass this, you just have to install one of these 
uh, extensions, either the EV or the event extension, restart the WebSocket server, and then that limit is also removed. Okay, so we, we then built this thing. We then all had a pusher replacement written in PHP, which is kind of crazy. And then uh, after we'd done all the fun stuff, we thought, okay, let's see if it actually scales. And um, so the results, um, what you see here is, basically I had a um, sort of like a penetration test on the, on the WebSocket connection, and we were constantly increasing the amount of users that connect to this uh, WebSocket server. And this was running on the lowest available digital ocean droplet. I think that they now have one gigabyte of RAM. Um, and it maxed out uh, with around 55,000 users that were able to connect, be uh, connected to this PHP running WebSocket server. Um, and the other, the other line that you can see there, they tried to connect these users, but they weren't able to. Um, so having 55,000 users being able to connect to a PHP WebSocket server is kind of crazy to me. Um, of course, you have to take this with a grain of salt. Uh, all these users, they were only connected. They weren't sending messages all the time to each other. So if you do this, it will probably be lower. But still, I think uh, even with the lowest specs on DigitalOcean, it's fair to say that it can scale very well. Yeah, and uh, that's all I have. If you want. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, the slide is gone. I'm going to tweet it out as well. If you want to know more about the package, uh, please check out the official documentation. Uh, there you can see how you can install it, how you can use SSL with it, let's encrypt, all the things. Uh, I'm going to tweet it out. And yeah, if you are interested in package development in general, I have created a video course, so you might want to check that out as well. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're, we're not done with Marcel. Uh, if you have questions, Marcel is, glad, is going to be glad to answer it. You can do it to, uh, through the application Slido that we're using this year for the first time. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you haven't been on the Trey K, I'm going to read it to you right now how to use it, Slido. Uh, you, uh, we, we are using it for the first time ever. Anyone can uh, uh, go to the Slido during the conference and uh, to assess our conference via code PHPSRB. After that, uh, all you have to do is to choose track A or track B, and you will be able to ask questions while the talk is being held. So you don't have to do it over the mic. But right now, since there's only one question that I can read right now f uh, from the Slido, uh, I'm going to bring a mic to, if, you, if somebody has a question uh, that wants to ask Marcel something about uh, his. Or please or approach me while I'm around if you don't want to feel comfortable with standing up. Uh, just talk to me as well. Yeah, or, 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 or you can do that. Right now we have one question. Yep. And this is, does a lot of well web socket work without running uh, migrations? Yes, it does. Yeah, uh, so the migrations are totally optional. If you, it's only for the, uh, for the statistics that are in, in the dashboard. So you get a statistical information about the peak connection uh, of users and the peak messages that you received and sent. If you don't want to have this kind of information, you don't need to migrate it. Yeah. Anybody else? Do you have questions for Marcel? Marcel? We have a mic. You don't have to yell. Just raise your hand. No? OK. okay. Marcel, thank you. Thanks again. I'm going to remind you the next speaker in 11.30 at the Trekkie is Herberto Graca making architecture explicit. And here on the Trek B, it's Ivan Jovanovic, micro frontends, microservice approach to the modern web. You're welcome to come here. Thank you.